Welcome back to Lumifa Classic. It's a Saturday morning here. We have the Barn Find More 1300 here, part of my trading up series. I know it's been sitting for a little bit, but as you know, I've been starting up my business and a little bit busy with that. But now I have some time during this weekend, a couple hours here and there, and I think we're going to try and get this all done in one weekend. So previous video, started this thing up, got it driving, did some engine mounts and some other things, and it runs and drives and seems to work pretty all right. However, it has some electrical issues we need to sort out. It has, uh, I want to just have a quick look at the brakes. I don't have any parts for it, but I think they're all right because it drove well and braked well, but I think we'll just, you know, look over them. I have new coolant hoses because that's the one thing I noticed that um, they have some pretty bad cracks in them. So we're going to replace those, probably take out the radiator, flush out the system, just make sure everything's fine. Basically get this thing ready to be back on the road and inspected in a weekend. So let's see if we can do that. We'll walk around the car, show you the plan, and then um, we'll start with the coolant system, I think. So it is a Morse 1300 ADO 16. So they came in 1100s and 1300s. Morris, Austin, MG, lots of different variants, but it seems to be a pretty good example. Haven't really found any rust in it. It has a little bit of surface rust in some places underneath, so we're going to treat that and underseal uh, that so it looks nice again. And um, yeah, I think we'll do a video in the future when we get this thing all running and on the road and ready. I think we'll do a video of detailing it, trying to make it look a little bit better paints definitely it needs a paint job but if we can polish some life out of it that would be really nice so as you can see here let me get an extra light out there's a massive cracks in there so it's not leaking but i have all new uh all new hoses i have a new radiator cap but if we have a look inside here there's some like crystallized blue coolant stuff in there it's not really in the fins but i want to take it out and flush it out so i've hit some of the um, bolts over here pantry fluid during the week so hopefully they'll all come loose other than that i do have some oil as well in the filter so we'll change that i want to this was just a temporary thing remember when we fixed the fuel pump uh, put the filter there. I want to put the filter in the rear and I want to replace that fuel line because I don't want to have a plastic filter here, especially right above an exhaust manifold. And then, yeah, the wiring is not pretty, but we're going to do the best that we can. I'm going to get some trays and things and I think we'll disconnect the bottom hose, try and get rid of all the coolant and then see how difficult it is to get the radiator out. Try and get the top hose off here. I'm not really sure exactly how the radiator is mounted, but we have bolts here on the thermostat housing, and we have there as well. So I don't know. We're gonna have to try and figure this out. It's not probably necessary to remove the radiator, but I think it's just easier for me to get it out and flush everything. All the clamps are pretty good, so we'll reuse those. corrosion in there so um, we'll see if these come off really easily we might just take the housing off and clean it and have a look at the thermostat I didn't order one because it um, it works fine it opens and keeps temperature oh, they move pretty nicely it does help when you spray things down a couple days before. All right, they actually move really, really nicely. I think that's the plan. We'll take the housing off and we'll see. If it ends up being really, really plugged in there, then I do have this really large sort of plastic tote and we can put that underneath here and flush out the engine without getting too much water on the ground. Okay. 
Okay, so right there it's a little loose now. Not sure if this is going to work, but I found these screws on the side of the shroud here, which seems to hold the shroud to the radiator. And the shroud seems to be being bolted to the engine, so I don't know, this might be an easy way to get the radiator out. We'll find out. Yeah, it's loose. Excellent. Let me just loosen, um, loosen that hose there. And one very small, cute radiator out of there. Looks to be in pretty good shape. There's some dirt there. So I'll take this outside and flush it out. Uh, but let's continue to get the thermostat housing off and just have a look at what the rest of the cooling system looks. If it's just up here or if it's below the thermostat as well. That was sitting on top of the thermostat, that piece of... Uh, crystallized coolant but underneath that looks really good nothing really bad at all that's just some RTV I'm gonna look I think I have some gasket material laying around so I'll make a gasket for that it's a lot better but in here that's really not bad at all and I'll just flush that out gently but I really don't think we're going to find too much else. We'll have a look at the, uh, you know, the return over here for the heater and all that. See what that looks like. But so far it's all looking not too bad at all. And I said the thermostat does open and work. So I'll just clean that off and put that back in. I'll get the rest of the hoses off for the heater and all of that. Since I found, you know, all of this inside the thermostat housing, since I'm doing the heater hoses as well, I thought let's remove the heater valve here and just make sure it's not blocked. Once again, I could just make a gasket for that, but uh, I really hope it's not. It was stuck here at first, but I have lubricated it and it moves back and forth. I don't remember if the heater works or not. I mean, the fan works, but I don't remember if you get any heat out of it, but we'll see. Oh yeah, that looks really good actually. I th that could have been blocked, but it's not. Perfect. I'll just have to make a new gasket, but uh, it's good that we checked. I'm gonna continue with the hoses. They're on the inside in the car. It's really, really tight in there, but I'll replace these and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So there's one here and one there, and then it's just all the other hoses on the front of the engine. I've run two new heater hoses. I'll show them inside the car later. So that's the top one, and this one goes to the heater valve that we just took off to make sure it was nice and I've blown through it. That's no problem. However, I don't have a gasket. You should always have some sort of gasket material that's at home. It's a good thing to have. So this is just a small scrap I have laying around, but it's going to be enough. And you can take like a dirty finger. This, and you can make... A little template around it so then you know exactly where to cut it so just gonna trace around there make those three holes and that's gonna fit right on there so I'll do that get that mounted up this heater hose and then we have the other hoses over here so down here by the water pump right I'm not sure if you can see but right there that is where the bypass hose goes between there and up there. That's quite a common failure. I have one here. And the nice thing about this, it's a bit like an accordion you can see. So you should be able to get it in there without removing things. It's very similar to the bypass hose on an XK engine, except those are really difficult to do without removing the thermostat housing and everything. And here it's the cylinder head. So... I'll try and sneak that up in there. Got new hose clamps 
and then I have the lower hose here and there it goes up for the return for the heater so yeah got all that going through there it's so tight down here I can't really film while doing it but I'll put those hoses in place I have the thermostat housing up there with a gasket just sitting with some hylomer so we'll get all this in place and then it's really just a top hose and then I can slide the radiator in again I decided to uh, just open up the float chamber here because I remember I took this off when we got it going the first time because the float was stuck and I tore that gasket. I have a new one and I thought might as well clean it out in here. This is my second go. So I just put a brush in here and then I sucked it out. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's still getting a little brown. Now it's I have brake clean in there. Just making it as good as possible. The fuel tank looks good inside and we have a fuel filter running. I think we'll replace that after a little bit. I do have a all metal one on order, but I'm going to relocate the filter to up here. And that's really far away from any heat source or anything. So it shouldn't be a problem, but they were all out of the metal ones at the parts store. So I should get one next week. But yeah, let me suck out the last of that and I'm going to clean off this gasket surface, put a new gasket on there. And then I think we are pretty much ready. We have the whole coolant system together and all that. I'm also going to just take off the dash pot and just clean inside here a little bit, clean that up. Then I want to move on to brakes. Uh, rear ones can be fine. Just can check the front one, see what they're like. And then I think we're pretty much ready to maybe go for a little bit of a test drive. Bleed out the coolant system, get this thing nice and warm so we can change the oil. There we go. Not perfect, but a lot better. Just cleaned off the dash pot. It was very clean and nice inside there. I actually think I've already cleaned the inside. And cleaned up there. Ran new fuel line over there. And it's all hooked back here. So that should be really, really safe and out of the way. That fuel filter is really far away from any heat source as well, so I do actually think it's going to be fine. But before I do hand the car over to someone else, I will replace that with a metal filter. But right now I like being able to see, yeah, what the fuel looks like. Oh, we're pretty ready. I'm just going to roll the car forward a bit and then we'll have a look at the brakes. And then uh, I think we could go for a little bit of a test drive. Honestly, this doesn't look bad. This thing sat outside my workshop for about six months after that. I I don't remember how long it's been off the road. in a barn before that, but I sat outside and just from driving in here, this is worn off. So yes, they're not perfect, but there's no ridge on them or anything. I think you can just drive on them. If you see here, there's a lot of meat left on those pads. I think we're going to leave well enough alone for now. The brake hoses look really fine. Uh, I did change out the brake fluid the last time I had this in the workshop. So I think we're just going to drive it and see if anything sticks or anything. We'll sort that then. I just greased that grease point over there on both sides. So at least we've done something. We'll clean this off, put the wheels back on, and then let's go for a test drive. I believe the coolant system is somewhere around the lines of less than four liters, maybe 3.8 or something. It's a tiny little system. I have a cap off down there, the expansion tank as well. I'm going to put a little bit in there as well. I'll show you guys later. It's hidden pretty far down. Yeah, we're not getting much in here. These are three liters, these containers. I think that is good enough to start it up. We'll bring it outside and we'll take off the cap and get the rest in there.
just sitting here warming up a little bit. I show you guys the uh, heater hoses I replaced in here. How the carpet's out. Spilled a little bit on the floor. I'm probably just going to clean off the floors and uh, give them just a light coat of paint. But they're in really good shape. If you have a look down there, you see one hose there, one hose above there. So that's everything for the heater. So, heater is set on max now. We should get some heat going through in a little bit. Let's see what it looks like under here. Warming up for two reasons now. I want to take a little test drive. I want to make sure the coolant system's working. And you know, we'll leave it through and we can fill up when we get back. And also want to warm up the engine so that I can change the oil when we get back. Look at the carb is looking really, really nice there, I think. Sounds so sweet, this little A series. Sounds really, really good. But I'm not seeing any massive, massive leaks yet. So let's take it for a little drive. Do some private roads around here, so there's no problem. We'll take it for a drive and we'll see. Sometimes it does. You got a brake feel, goes up the temperature if we get some heat in the cabin. Temperature gauge started to move up, so. Thermostat should open pretty soon. That's really good. We have a little bit of fuel in it, so uh, not too much actually. I think that's just like five liters or something. Gotta get some more, but uh, it's enough for a little test drive. Got my fixed seat belt on here. Might help something at least. Fire extinguisher, and we're just going here around the block. I'm gonna see if we have. Let's roll the window up and see if we have a heater. I think the fan works. Oh, I'm getting warm air up on the screen. That's really good. All right, let's go for a drive. Do we have wipers? Yes. Bad blades, but they work. All right, All right let's go. Second. Temperature just went down a little bit, so I'm guessing the thermostat opened. I am getting nice toasty heat in here, so that's really, really nice. And we need some wiper action again. This is actually really nice. There's quite a bit of road noise, but that's also because the whole rubber here is sitting in the back. It started to fall off, we need to glue that back on, but it does handle like a little go-kart, this thing. And there. Now with the engine mounts fixed, it's not hitting anywhere. The gear change actually feels better as well. Uh, probably want to turn down the heater a bit. Um, we'll just open the window instead. I want to make it circulate everything through so we bleed the system. But we're sitting right at the beginning of N on the gauge. That's good. The speedo works. So yeah, a set of wiper blades would be good. Oh, high speed works as well. And they park. I mean, what else can you ask for? So over here, we're going to turn around. Like I said, I don't have that much fuel in it, and I don't feel like walking. But this is enough for such a small car, just to warm it up, and get the coolant circulating, and also get the oil a little, little warm. So we're gonna try out the turning circle here. Brakes feel like they're doing something. And let's try reverse. Yes, that was reverse. It's nice that the heater works because I have a little bit of plan for this car. I already have a potential buyer for it. Just needs to be on the road and ready. And that is Dan, my painter. He thinks this is a really fun little car. He'd like to fix up the bodywork on it and paint it. And maybe put some logos on it for his company. He thinks it's just a fun little thing. And I said, all right, if you buy it, 
I'll deliver it. And that is, what is that, 250 kilometers away? Which well, isn't very far. I mean, a small car like this, that's quite a drive. We're not gonna do highways then, we're gonna do small things, but I'm glad I have a working heater if, uh, if that all happens and we'll do a little road trip. Let me know if you would like to see that film because I think that could be a fun little trip with this thing. Uh, we do, um, there's a coastal road that goes up there which I've never driven. I thought this would be perfect for that. Like I said, I don't want it to, it could do highway speeds. It should be able to, but I really, really don't want to. I don't think that's what this car is about. Have we gotten into fourth yet? Let's try. All right, we are in third. Ooh, four gears. Man, that's fancy. All right, we're gonna go back. We'll feel all the hubs and everything. Make sure nothing's really getting hot. And we'll pull it to workshop. Uh, we're not gonna open cool tonight because that's all pressurized and warm, but it's holding really nice pressure. So we'll let that cool down, then we'll check level once it's all cooled down. But we'll pull it in, get some jack stands under it, and drain the oil. Because uh, I don't know how old that is, and now it's fully warmed up. And it's really critical with the oil on these because it's chained, it's shared by the gearbox as well. Nice little downshift there. Ah, it's a fun little car. I call that a successful test drive. None of the brakes felt overly warm. The drums were a little bit warmer, but I also pulled the parking brake a couple times just to try and, you know, clean the insides of them. So next time I drive, that should be no issue. But the, the couple hard stops, the calipers up front, everything seems to be working well. I noticed one thing. There's a little bit of smoke coming out. All right, it's dark for you guys. Right there. And that's the heater hose there. It's leaking a little bit right there. I used the original style clamp just because they look good. Um, but um, I'll put a modern style clamp on there as well because this is bottomed out and it feels a little loose. So sort that out. But now we'll drop the oil while it's warm and that can nicely just flow out of it. And then it's just a filter and some new oil in it. Well, let's just see, I really approve of this car. I love all cars that you don't need to jack up to change the oil. That's just the best. Let's see if we can get that washer. Speaking of actually oil, it seems like the only oil leak I really have is actually that washer. So I'm going to replace it. Yeah, that's black looking. As long as you don't see chunks of gear coming out of there, should be good, pretty good. This oil is uh, shared with the gearbox. So we'll let that drain. Okay, wait, where's the oil? Yeah. I'm going to check where the oil filter is. Maybe you do need to jack it up to change the oil fully, but at least you don't need to drain it, which is good. All right there. So that's uh, good. You can do all of this without jacking the car up. I approve. There's a magnet here, and there's a little, little bit of something, you know, probably have someone has some gear grinding at some point or something, but I wouldn't call it catastrophic. No chunks or anything. So try that off. Put on a new washer. Put this on, get the filter out. That we'll have a look at. If we see a lot of metal in there, then I get a little worried. But so far, I don't think this is anything to worry about. It's hard to see, but because I can't really get into the filter. But I'm not seeing any lot of shininess, I'm not seeing any chunks, not in there as well. So I think we have nothing to worry about. I think this engine, it sounds really sweet. And I think it is a nice, healthy Lloyd series. Well, we got a lot accomplished, but there's still some things left to do. I have some electrical issues. I only have indicators. I don't have any headlights or anything. I think I'm just gonna find a fuse box and clean up things. Uh, I need to get a smaller battery that actually fits better on the battery tray and I can hold that down. Then I can put the washer bottle back on, make sure that the washers work. Um, I'm not sure about brake lights. So check over all the lights, things like that. And then just do a little bit once over, put the carpets back in. In the meantime, I think I'm just going to rust proof the floors a little bit, a couple things. So join me next time where we tackle some of the last things on this car. And then this should be ready to be back on the road. So we're almost done in today's videos, but ran out of time a little bit. But I'm really happy with the coolant hoses and everything. Nice heat in the car and nothing's leaking. Well, it was, but I have a hose clamp on there and that's fine now. Carb is good, everything's running well, and we have some fresh oil in it. Now, in case you're wondering, 
I use uh, Castro Classic 20W50. I think it's going to run really well on that. So next time on this car, we'll get those last little things on. We'll do some more test driving. I think I might want to bump up the idle speed a tiny bit. It's a little low, uh, but you know, more miles under its belt, it might just need to get blown up. I think we need to raise that a tiny bit and then we'll see if this thing is ready. And then let you guys just let me know if you want to see that little road trip with the car. If that's something you want me to bring the camera along, because I should be, um, it's going to take like half a day to go up there or not really half a day, but probably four or five hours. So it's going to be quite a drive. Anyways, until next time, I'm Adam. This was Lumifet Classic. I'll see you soon.